Hey everyone. You may have seen people have done a couple of uh, distro reviews of Myo Linux. This is the Myo Linux Modern, which has a very, very beautiful interface. It's loosely modeled on the D pin desktop. Um, and it's very pretty. It has, uh, some very nice features to it. But one of the things that I've noticed is that I haven't seen anyone do a complete install of this on bare metal. And so today we're gonna to run through the install process because I think for a new user, this could be quite daunting because of the nature of the install. It's not a standard insta installer like Calamares. Um, and so I thought well, I'd run through that today. I'm gonna to load up Gparted and I'll show you the partition scheme. In fact, we'll change it and we'll go through it and change it to how I've done it personally for me. So I'm going to use SDF. It has four partitions. I'm going to format that to extended four. I'm going to format that to Linux swap. Format that one to extended four. And format that one to extended four. So I'm going to apply that. And we'll use this drive to do the install on. So I'm going to go for boot partition, swap partition, root partition, and a home partition. And this shouldn't take too long. And um, once this is done, I'll walk you through the installer. Because, like I say, I think it could be quite daunting uh, for somebody new to Linux, or even somebody fairly seasoned with Linux, it may be a bit confusing. You have to be very careful how to choose your drives here. If you choose the wrong options, it would be very, very easy to overwrite the wrong system or install to the wrong system. So this is about to finish updating. I'll mark the first partition as boot. It may already be done. It is already done, so I don't need to do that, but I am going to turn swap on to save me having to do it later. All right, so this, there we go, that's done. So we'll pull up the installer. And now the first thing it asks us is which method of becoming the administrator or root user would we like to use, either su or sudo. I'm going to use su in this particular instance. The default password on Myo is Myo, which is an acronym for make it your own. And you can see it's a refractor build. Um, so the live, live CD has been built using refractor. And this is the installer options. And this is where it could get a bit confusing for someone. Now, because of the way I've done my partitions, I'm having a separate home. I'm having a separate boot swap partition is already created. I don't need to encrypt the root file system. I don't know, don't need to encrypt the home partition as this is just a demonstration, but you can do that if you like. I'm not gonna touch these two options. They would take a very long time. I do want to install a bootloader, so I'm not gonna tick that. And I do want it to format the file systems just to make sure I'm going to use UUID in the etc. FS tab, which is good as it says there, if the drive order changes, I'm not going to use labels. I rarely use these labels because I tend to go with how Linux sees the drives rather than labeling. I do not want automatic login to desktop. I do not want automatic login to console. And that's fine. And these are the pre-install and this is time zone script and the cleanup script. We leave those enabled. So the first thing it's going to ask is, have you done your partitioning? In my particular case, I've done that. So I'm going to skip that step. And I want that to install to the MBR, the master boot record of the disk I choose. Now it's asking me, where would I like to choose to install the bootloader? Well, I know that's disk SDF. And just to make doubly sure, if I run lsblk, ls block, which looks at the block level devices, I can see SDF here. 
I can see that it's a Linux system because it's has the uh, boot partition and a swap partition, the 150 gig root partition and the rest of it for home. So SDF in this case is the right disk. So I'm going to tell it SDF, install the bootloader to that. Now it's very handily provided me with a window which is providing me with the information I've just received. In my opinion, this window would have been better appearing first before I chose the disk to put the boot bootloader on, which is SDF1 or SDF, the root disk. But now it's showing me the partition list. It would make it a little bit easier. It shows the UUID of the disk and the part UID of the disks. But because I've already taken control of this, I know which disk I'm putting it on. And in this instance, it's going to be SDF1 for the boot partition, extended four. So it's going to go off and format it again, even though I've prepared them. And I'm, I'm happy with that. That's fine. Now it's asking for the root partition. Let's just minimize that one so it doesn't confuse. And that one. One thing is do not close this window as it states here. Do not close this window because it's going to be reused in a minute. So the root partition will be SDF3 in this case because SDF2 is the swap partition. And now it's asking which one do I want for home and that will be SDF4. It's going to automatically detect the swap partition next, which it has. And as you can see, that's SDF2. So I'm going to say yes to that. And now we can get to this is the last summary we get to see before we commit to the process. This is your last chance to exit. If you're unsure or you think you may have made a mistake, very good that this is here. So the bootloader is going to be installed to SDF. The operating system will be installed on dev SDF3. Home will be on SDF4 and boot will be installed to SDF1. Desktop auto login is disabled as we chose and console auto login will be disabled as we chose also. And these are the pre init scripts and the post install scripts. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to proceed with the installation. Now it's asking for our geographic area. I'm in Europe. London because I'm in the UK. I scroll down to EN, ENGB UTF-8 is what I'm going to choose for that one. Not US, I want GB, yeah. Okay, now it's asking for the keyboard type, generic 105 key international PC, that's fine. I'm going to go with that. English US, now there seems to be a little bit of a bug here. It's only picking up on US. It could be that that in brackets shouldn't be there. It is actually referencing English, but I'm not going to take a chance on that in case it's not. I can correct this later on once it's installed. So I'm just going to go with English US, but I think that may be a slight bug. I'm going to go with the default options here. This one's particularly useful. Control plus Alt plus Backspace to terminate the X server. So if you do get problems, you could activate this key combination to um, exit the X server. I'm going to leave that off for this particular install. Now we need to jump back here because now it's dropped back down to the terminal and it wants to, is asking us if we want to proceed. I'm going to say yes. It's going to ask us again for the next partition once this is done. Now it's asking us for SDF4. That's going to be our home partition. So yes, we want that to happen. And what I'll do once this is installed, as you can see at the moment, it's running in quite a small res a low resolution because it didn't detect my graphics card on the way up. Um, so I will install the graphics drivers and do a post install addition to this video so we can see what it's like once the drivers and everything are installed. This doesn't take very long. It's a very fast install. The ISO is only about 520, 540 meg. 
It's a beautiful desktop system based on Dev1. So it's Debian based. And this should be just about finished. It doesn't take very long at all. There we go. There we go, there's the init RD, there's the bootloader. As you can see, very, very quick install. Just a couple of minutes. And this shouldn't take too long, as I've targeted a specific disk. There we go, I can hear the disks being accessed now, so the bootloader is being installed. I believe this uses OpenBox. Yeah, it does. It uses the OpenBox display. Permit sudo for new user. Yes, for this new user. I'm about to create use sudo as default for new user. No, use sudo only for shutdown. That's fine. So the host name, as I'm doing this on bare metal on my machine, I'm going to use my real machine name. And I'm just going to put these details in. I'm okay with that for this user. I don't want it to be the default for new users. I can administer them afterwards, and that's okay for shutdown. It stops anyone from just shutting it down. I'm gonna put a, put in a password. Now it's gonna use this is what this next one is for the root user. Or it's the other way around. One was one was for root and one is for the user you just created. So I'm assuming this second one is for root. And that's the installation done. That's it. We don't need the part UID. We could bring up the... Uh, if it's still available. I don't think it is very available anymore. No, I can't see the welcome screen there. No, okay, so that's the installation done. You can see how very quick that was. There are some nice features in this menu as it goes. The snapshot feature is quite good. You can take one now, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, area mode, window mode, very good. This is very, very minimal installation. There's hardly anything installed, so it gives you the freedom to add the items you want. So you can see Leafpad under accessories. Pulse audio volume control is installed. I've installed Simple Screen Recorder to do this. Network is just Conman UI, which is a beautiful system tray um, connectivity manager. It's really, really good. Customize look and feel, keyboard and mouse, monitor settings, nitrogen as the uh, desktop wallpaper changer. Notifications, open box configuration manager, power manager, and tint 2, which is the panel. Bleach pit, both as root and as user. GDB package installer, gparted on the installer. Install Myo Linux LX terminal, open box, and the accessories. I like this feature customize look and feel as root, so you can change the look and feel for the root user. A lot of distros deliberately keep that vanilla so that. There's a very clear distinction between operating as root and as a user, but uh, I think for experienced users, why not, you know, theme your root access the same as your user access. I think that's a really good feature and it's welcomed to see that there. PC Man FM as root. We've got Conkey, Compton, touchpad controls, live keyboard layout, panel mode chooser, Myo Linux control center, and your low chaos system settings. So that's how to install it. What I'm going to do now is reboot, install the NVIDIA drivers, and I'll pop back in with a post-install addendum in a second. Okay, so we're back. I've installed the NVIDIA drivers. I've done a full system upgrade on this. Um, there's a few things I have installed. MPV, VLC, media player, obviously simple screen recorder again. Well, actually... One nice feature about this is um, Simple Screen Recorder carried over from the live media installation. 
So I installed Simple Screen Recorder on the live media and when I booted into this, Simple Screen Recorder was still here. So that's a nice feature. I don't know if that's deliberate or, or what really. And also a quick addendum to what I said about the system locale settings. Yeah, this one. When we set this, International Keyboard UK English, you see I should have gone down to Other. So by default, it was displaying US options. So you go to other, then next, then it will give you the complete list. Uh, then you choose English, English UK. And now it's correct. So my bad, that wasn't broken. I wasn't paying attention. I had to choose other first and then it would allow me access to the other locales or the other keyboard settings available. That is how to install Myo Modern uh, Dev1 on bare metal. So hopefully that install procedure is clear enough for anyone to follow and shouldn't cause you any problems if you're vigilant about the disks you're choosing when you do do the install. I would recommend using Gparted first, prepping your disk and then run the installer and then you're less likely to run into any hassles that way. So that's it. So don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you all either in the next video or the next live stream. Thank you very much for watching.